Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a scan and cut cutting file from a machine embroidery applique file. Now I'm going to show you how to do this with and without software. So in the first part of this video I'm going to show you how to use Embrilliance Essentials and I'm actually going to be using a free library file that Embrilliance gave some years ago and I'll show you where I got mine. But if you don't have software you can do this directly on your scan and cut machine and all you have to do is get yourself a applique stitch file in whichever format you use for your sewing machine and in the next part of this video I'm going to show you how to do it on the scan and cut. I'm going to use this same file for both but as I say you just get an applique stitch file in your file format and you'll be able to do this yourself. So first of all just to show you where I got the file I'm just going to go to Embrilliance Essentials this is the home page and down under projects I'm using two free files so the first one for me I'm assuming this will be the same for everybody is on page two so I downloaded this design and in this design there's a machine embroidery that stitches out the word love but there's also a separate file with this little stitched daisy and it's just the daisy I'm going to use then on page six I'm also using these free hearts that go in the library in Embrilliance and as I say you might not be able to get this obviously if you've not got essentials because this goes into the actual library of your program. It's not a downloadable stitched file initially. So you'll just have to get your own stitch file. Okay, so that's where I got my two files from. So now I'm just going to go back to Embrilliance. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got my 4x4 hoop selected. And I'm going to go up to the icon that looks like a cog with an arrow. And... By default, you may have this library and Embrilliance up here. If you click on the drop down arrow, you'll see Embrilliance applique, and that's where that BX file drops into. And I'm going to choose the small heart and say OK. If you can hear Eddie in the background, every time I start screen recording, he starts chewing on a toy or pacing up and down. I don't know why he does the same when we go on the phone so he kind of just turns into a naughty child okay so as I say I've chosen the small heart and you can see at the top of the screen here it's two inches high and then if you look over on the right hand side it looks as though there are two color swatches and they're both in the same color and then if I go up to where the stitch simulator is here and I start to drag across, you'll see it does the outline, which is the placement stitch that would stitch on your fabric. Then it stitches again. So that's like your tack down stitch. And then it does the blanket stitch around the edge. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is change the colours. So I'm going to click on the first colour swap and I'm going to select applique. I'm going to make sure that it says applique position here. It may say not applique. If it does, just click on the arrow, change it to applique position, and then you can either create your cut file at the exact same size, or you can inflate the size if you want to. It's entirely up to you. For this particular project, I'm going to leave it just at the exact same size but if you're ever making a cut file and you're worried that the stitches may not catch you can inflate the size here of your cut file and I usually do maybe one one millimeter or 1.5 as I say for this I'm just going to leave it at zero 
I'm going to say save all and that's going to open up my save dialog box and you can see straight away it says untitled.svg so from that initial embroidery applique stitch file I've now been able to make a scan and cut cut file it in SVG format so I'm going to get rid of the words untitled and I'm just going to type heart.svg and save it on my desktop um, it's going to come up with this DPI box I'm just going to say OK and close that down so I've now got my SVG or scan and cut cut file saved but there are three steps to this design and I want it to stop after the first second step so that I can do the tack down and basting stitch so what I'm going to do I'm going to select the second color swatch I'm going to say not applique I'm going to go to color and I'm just going to change it to pink and then when I go back to the stitch file now you'll see I've got the basting stitch then I've got the second basting stitch which runs into the blanket stitch okay so now I've got two different colors here and the reason that I've changed it to a different color is first of all it's going to do the tack down stitch and the machine will stop then I'm going to put my piece of fabric that I've cut with my scan and cut over the tack down and then it's going to stitch that down and then do the blanket stitch and that can all be in the same colour but I'm going to duplicate and resize this heart and in order so that my embroidery machine stitches everything as I want it to stitch the colours have to be different and I'll try and explain that as I go on so just going back to the original heart you can see it's two inches high and it's two and one sixteenth inch wide so I'm going to make my first one 1.75 inches wide so I'm going to highlight the size and do 1.75 and hit enter and that's my first heart now I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste and I'm just using the right click on my mouse and that's given me a duplicate and you can see now I've got two designs over here so this second one I'm going to make 1.60 wide and then I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to right click and copy and right click and paste and bring a third one on and I'm going to make this one 1.5 inches wide so I've got three hearts that are three different sizes and then obviously from here if I want to rotate them and you know just kind of get them into some position I can do I'm going to select the third one I'm just using the now I'm going to bring these up a bit because the piece of cardstock that I'm going to stitch these on is going to be four and a half inches square but it's going to have some cutouts down at the bottom so I want to kind of position these hearts a little bit higher up on the design and then I also want to add in my little flower so I'm going to go up here where it says merge a stitch file and I'm going to go and search on my computer for the daisy de design that I've already downloaded which I showed you how to get from Embrilliance Essentials so here's my little daisy design I'm going to copy and paste it and I'm just going to have two of them so now you can see I've got my three hearts and then my daisy designs here step four is in two steps it's the blue step and the yellow step and the same here so I've got step four and step five but I want to color sort these and they all have to be different colors for the color sort to work so now I'm going to go up to the top of the page 
Utility. And I'm going to go Colour Sort. And it says the design has been reduced by four colour changes. So the idea of this is that hopefully it's going to stitch all the peach sections of the three hearts. Then I'll already have my scan and cut cut files for the hearts which I can place on top. And then it's going to stitch all the pink tack down stitches of the three hearts and then do the blanket stitch. So I can say new view, go to colour and then you can see all the peach sections are together, all the pink sections are together and then the blue and the yellows are together. So if I go back to the stitch simulator, you can see it's going to stitch the basting stitch for one heart, then another and then the other. Then I can put my fabric down that I've already pre-cut with my scan and cut. Then it's going to tack them all down and then it's going to do the blanket stitch for all three. Then it's going to do all the blue elements for the first daisy and for the second daisy. And then it's going to do the yellow on top. So all that I need to do now is go to the top of my page and go file. I always do save stitch file. If you were personalising this design, so if you were adding somebody's name and then you wanted to be able to recreate this design but change the name, you would save a working file. But I don't need a working file. I'm just going to do save stitch file. I'm going to, you can see it's already come up with mydesign.pes. I'm going to highlight where it says my design and I'm going to change that to hearts and flowers dot pes save it onto my desktop put that onto a usb stick and then i could put that usb stick into my scan and cut machine and i could cut the cut file that i've made here and then i could put the usb stick into my embroidery machine and i could stitch it but as i say in the next part of the video i'm going to show you how to make the cut file directly on your scan and cut machine so stick with me okay so i've showed you how to create the design in embrilliance essentials but if you don't have software this is how you do it directly on your machine i do have another video on my youtube channel where i've shown how to do this in the past so i'm only going to kind of quickly run through this you can always refer back to the other one or I'll try to put an information card at the end of the video. Okay, so I've got the two inch embroidery applique heart saved on my USB stick, which I've plugged into the side of my scan and cut machine. So I'm going to go to retrieve data from USB and find the single two inch PES heart design. Now, one thing I would say, obviously I'm not an expert in machine embroidery, but when I put this PES file into my sewing machine, it would only let me scale it down a, cer a certain amount. So I'm just going to show you how to make the cut file for this size here. Obviously I've created my cut and stitch file in Embrilliance Essentials and that's the one I'm going to use. But if you don't have software, then the, the way I think that you would do this would be put your design on your sewing machine first, on your embroidery machine, duplicate the heart say three times if you wanted to you know, do something similar to, the, to what I'm going to do in this video. And then resize each heart until it looks okay on your embroidery screen. Take a note of the height and width of each heart. And then when you open the PES file here on your scan and cut machine, create three of them and size them to the same size as the stitch file on your embroidery machine and then you can make your cut files that way. I hope that makes sense. But for, for today's video, I'm just going to show you how to turn an embroidery applique file that's in the PES format into a cut file done directly on your scan and cut machine without software. I'm going to 
I'm going to select the flower, but I'm just going to select the shield first of all. And you can see it says there's no cutting data. So we're going to go to the flower. I'm going to leave it at the size it is and say OK. And you've got three options. You want the one on the far right that looks like it's got a zigzag stitch across the top. I'm going to select that and say OK. I'm going to set it on my map. So there is my design. Now, obviously, as I said, from what I can see, if you want to do this directly on the machine, you need to size your stitch file on your embroidery machine first. Make a note of it. Then once you get it on the screen here, you can do edit, object edit, and you can resize it to the size of your stitch file. OK, I'm just going to leave mine as it is. So I'll just go back to how it comes on the screen. OK, so it will come on selected. I'm going to say or if you've got more than one, one of them will be selected. I'm going to say edit, object edit, and you'll see it's grouped. Now, if you're going to make a cut file from a stitch file that you've sized on your embroidery machine, leave it grouped while you size it down. I'm going to ungroup mine because I'm not going to alter the size of this particular shape because I'm just showing you how to make a cut file. So if I click anywhere on the page, that will deselect because there's more than one object here, although you can only see one, they're all stacked on top of each other. So just by clicking anywhere on the page, that de deselects everything. And now when I select, I can drag them apart. So that's the blanket stitch, which is the third step of the design. That's the tack down stitch and that's the basting stitch. So I don't need these two. This is the one that you would need to make your cut file. So with these two down here out of the way, I'm going to say OK. And one of them selected, so that's fine. I'm going to use the three red boxes. Choose this first box. Just isolate those two. Say OK, OK, and send them to the bin. And this now is my cut file for my embroidery applique. So I can save it to the USB stick for future use, or I can save it into the machine's memory for future use. And then I've got the embroidery elements and the cut elements on the same USB stick. So I would just take the USB stick out of my scan and cut once I've created and cut my fabric. And then I would put that into my embroidery machine and stitch out the design. So I hope that was helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.